All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at um, complex numbers. We started this in class, but I thought I would do a video so you could really work on finishing it up. All right, so complex numbers is, is the name of, it's the umbrella for all the different types of numbers we might look at, we might work with. Okay, so it's up here. Now, complex numbers are either real or not real. The, the non-real ones are, are usually just called imaginary, okay? So real numbers is what we've been working with, what you normally work with. It's just when you get into the area of solving polynomial equations that we start wanting to have these, these imaginary numbers, and you'll see why in a minute. So like rational numbers, those are numbers like, like one-third, like, you know, 3.12, they can also be numbers that are decimals that keep going. Like if you had point six 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 six, you know, and it kept going, that's still rational. That's actually equal to two thirds. Okay. Irrational numbers; those are decimals that don't ever stop, but don't also don't ever repeat digits. That would be things like three point one zero one zero zero one, where there might be. There might be a pattern or not. You know, you might not see a pattern, but they don't ever stop or repeat. Pi is one of these, 3.14, but that's just an approximation. The letter, the little E for Euler's number, that's also about three. It's like 2.72. So pi is around 3.14, and E is around, I think it's 2.72. Um, but anyway, I'll come back to that. I don't want to put the wrong thing. It's either 2.72 or 2.78, okay? And then the non-real ones are, um, the non-real ones are the ones that turn out to be imaginary. So they'll look like this. They'll look like 2i or 3 plus i. They come from having like a negative under a radical, like the square root of negative 7 or the the square root of a negative 36. See, the square root of negative 36, for instance, would be 6i. Square root of negative 7 would really be i square root of 7. See, what it is, is for these, somebody said, look, we need to be able to have an, something that, this, is an, this right here is an answer to some things we try to solve, and we want to be able to say we can solve it. We don't want to say there's no real solution. So let's make up i, we're going to let it equal the square root of negative 1. Anytime you see the square root of negative 1, that's i, and then we can say we have a solution. Okay. So one more thing about that before we work some problems. So let me change colors. So we're working on quadratic equations last time. Rational ones come from when you're working your quadratic equation. Let's do a simple one. Maybe you get something like x squared equals 16. When you go to solve that one, you might square root both sides and you'd get plus or minus the square root of 16, which means your answer would be positive or negative 4, right? So ones where the, the number under the radical right here is a perfect square, they turn out to be rational. And this would also be the case if you had the more complicated expressions that result from the quadratic formula. If what's under the radical is a perfect square, where when you do the square root, you don't have the radical anymore, that puts you in the rational area. But sometimes you get things like square root, I mean, x squared equals, say, 20. And then when you do the square root of both sides, you get x equals plus or minus the square root of 20. And 20 is not a perfect square. So if you did the square root of 20 on your calculator, you would wind up having a decimal. Okay? So that we normally put in what we call simplest radical form. And we'll be doing that on these problems. So hopefully you'll get the hang of it. But 20 is 4 times 5. So when you do the square root of 4, you get 2. But the square root of 5, you can't do anything about. So it's stuck underneath that radical. So... That's irrational because like if you did that, let me tell you what that is. If you did the square root of 20 on your calculator, you would wind up getting 
four, seven, two, one, four point four, seven, two, one, and it keeps going, but not in any kind of a pattern. And it doesn't ever stop either. Okay. All right, so that's just the approximation for it. And then these imaginary ones, if I had like x squared equals negative 16, and I took the square root, there's a negative under the radical. And the answer is not negative 4. The square root of negative 1 would be i. Square root of 16 is 4. So you would wind up with plus or minus 4i on that one. And then we could do something similar with square root of negative 20. So anytime you have the negative under the radical, that leads you to the imaginary type. Anytime what's under the radical is not a perfect square, that leads you to the irrational kind. And anytime what's under the radical is a perfect square, that means you have nice numbers. Those are called rational. Okay. Now all of that's true if the quadratic that we're dealing with has the a, the b, and the c are nice numbers. Okay. All right, so up at the top, when it says it has those lines, any number that can be written in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i equals square root of negative 1, that's the definition of a complex number. Okay, so even a number like 4 is considered complex because you can write it as 4 plus 0i. And any of these irrational numbers are complex because, for instance, with pi, you could write it as pi plus 0i. And so you could get it into the a plus bi form. And then these a lot of times already are in that form. Or if you have a pure imaginary number, you could write it as 0 plus 6i and make it look like that a plus bi form, okay? So let me tell you what e is for sure. I can't remember if it's 2.78 or 2.72. It's 2.718. This one is about 2.72, okay? All right, so now I want to go ahead and get into um, doing the operations, to simplifying and doing the operations of complex numbers. Let's see if I can back that up a little bit. Okay. All right, so let me put this back up a little bit so they're out of the way. All right, just kind of move that for a second. Okay, so if you've got this handout right here, it's... Um, from class, then these are the problems I'm going to do. Um, I'd like to just go ahead and do this on a on a whiteboard so that I don't have to have such such a little amount of room. So I'll be doing it on a on another piece of paper on, on a whiteboard, um, and I'll post this in document sharing so you can access it if you weren't here. All right, so let's go ahead and look at that first problem. So we were trying to do the square root of negative 48. So that was just simplify. There we go. Just takes a minute. Okay. So in problem number one, we're trying to do the square root of negative 48. So what I like to do is think about it like this. And we have to wind up simplifying the square root of 48. So first, first I pull apart the negative 1 from the 48. I know that negative 1 under the radical is going to turn into an i. The square root of negative 1 is going to turn into an i for here. This will be i. So now I'm just going to take the 48 and simplify it. Okay, there's two things you can do. You can separate it into a perfect square. So you can think about your perfect squares, right? 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and so on. You can think about your perfect squares and then wind up um, 
finding the largest one that goes into it evenly. And then when you're doing the square root of 48, you need to do the square root of 16, which is 4, and then you have the square root of 3 left over. The square root of negative 1 is going to be replaced with i, so it's got to be part of it. So you have like an i, and then the 4, the square root of 3, and all of this is multiplication. And then the typical way we write it is like this. Okay. So that's how you simplify. All right. Let's look at the adding. So with the adding, we got one complex number, adding and subtracting, and then I'm going to subtract negative 7 minus 2i. When it's like that, there's no simplifying to do first. This one's pretty easy. All you have to do is think of it the same way you would if the i really were a variable. Think about it like like terms and whether you can combine them. So this would be negative 3 plus 5i. And then that negative is like a negative 1. So you'll distribute it, and this will become plus 7 plus 2i. So the negative 3 and the 7 would become 4, and the 5i and the 2i would be 7i. And that would be your final answer. They're not like terms, so you don't go any further. Okay. All right, then we're getting into some multiplying ones. Let's do number three. Okay, so on problem number three, you've got just one term out in front of the parentheses, and then three minus two i. So you're trying to you're trying to distribute this five i. So what's going to happen on the multiplying area? Sometimes you'll see it in a minute. It's when you do your distributing, you can start off by thinking about the i's just like you would if they were x's. This becomes 15i, and then 5i times 2i is 10i squared. I should have said 5i times negative 2i would be minus 10i squared. So then the you, you'd think, well, maybe I'm done. But then the interesting thing is that we know already that i is defined to be the square root of negative 1. Well, imagine squaring both sides. The left side would be this, and then the right side would look like that. And then we define, or we work that out and say that would be negative 1. It's really the definition of it is that the um, i squared equals negative 1. So what that means is anytime you have an i squared in a problem, okay, let me go back, I lost my whiteboard. This right here, anytime you have that, that's going to wind up equal, equaling just negative 1. Okay, let me get this bigger and find my tools. There they are. This right here is going to equal negative 1. So if you have negative 10 times negative 1 right there, this would become 15i negative times a negative is plus 10. Okay. And then typically with complex numbers, you do the part that doesn't have the i first and the part that does have the i second, and then this would be your answer. Okay. All right. So this is important. i squared equals negative 1. That's going to come up a lot on the multiplying problems. Okay, so with problem number 4, we have, oh, this one's going to be uh, quite a bit more work because see how it doesn't start with the i's in it initially? Okay. So we're going to have to simplify these first. All right, the square root of 7 we can't do anything with because it doesn't have any perfect squares that divide into it, and it doesn't have an i under a negative underneath the radical. Square root of negative 3, though, see that negative right there? That's negative 1 times 3. And when you simplify that, you just replace the square root of negative 1 with i. Don't keep the square root on the i. It's just i. So that guy is i square root of 3. Okay, we still have a minus. Now the square root of negative 8, 
You can pull off the negative. You need to do that. Take the i's out first. Okay. The square root of negative 1, that's your i. And then 8 can be broken down into 4 times 2. And you might stop there when you're simplifying radicals because 4 is a perfect square. And the square root of 4 is 2. And then you can't do anything about the other. But don't forget that you still have, that's just the square root of 8, you still have the i, and we typically write it with the i sandwiched between the 2 and the square root of 2. So this one is 2i square root of 2. If things are not simplified, you know, not the radicals aren't simplified, the i, the negatives right there, the, the i hasn't been given to you outright, you need to pull out the i's first. Okay. in order to not um, lose them. Okay. All right, now we're going to be doing some multiplying. So we're going to take this and we're going to distribute it. And I'm going to write more than I normally suggest you do on this since it's the first one we did. So we're going to be multiplying it times the i squared of 3. Then see how the 2i squared of 2 is positive and the square root of 7 is negative. So we're going to have minus... 2i squared of 2 times the square root of 7. Okay, now what you want to do is work on this part and then you're going to work on that part and getting it simplified. And don't forget that in between all of these is multiplication. Okay, so this is 2 times i times i times square root of 2 times square root of 3. Now in Math 100, if you had it, you learned that if things were multiplied, you could put stuff back together under the radical. So you'd get a square root of 6. Here we have the 2i squared out in front. And then we said anytime you have an i squared, you replace it with a negative 1. So this becomes negative 2 square root of 6. No i at all left on that piece. Okay. Then over here, you really just have 2 times i times square root of 2 times square root of 7. And these radicals are being multiplied, so you can put them back together underneath. And you wind up with 2i square root of 14 minus 2i square root of 14. Okay, believe it or not, that's your final answer on that one. Okay. I'm going to stop my video here. I'll do pick up and do another one with the multiplying and dividing and the powers of complex numbers. I just don't like the videos to get too long.